This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Monday, June the 3rd, 2019. It's the feast day of St. Charles Luanga and his companions. Collectively, they're known as the Ugandan martyrs. Charles Luanga was born in 1860 and converted to the Catholic faith in 1885. He was a member of the Baganda tribe and was a major player in the court of King Mwanga II of Buganda. The king grew anxious about the large number of converts being made by the missionaries and demanded everyone convert back to paganism. The king had a large number of Anglican Christians and some Catholics murdered for disobeying him, and one of them had been his right-hand man. So the king appointed Charles Lawanga, who sought baptism on the same day he was appointed to the position that his predecessor had vacated when he was killed for being a Christian. That's, uh, let's go with moxie. That's, uh, moxie. About six months later, the king did another purge of Christians, and Luanga led a large group of the royal court in standing up to the king and refusing to leave their faith behind. On June the 3rd, 1886, Luanga was burned alive. His last words were, It is as if you are pouring water on me. Please repent and become a Christian like me. St. Charles and all the Ugandan martyrs, pray for us. Today in 1539, Spanish conquistador and explorer Hernando de Soto landed in Tampa Bay and claimed what would become the U.S. state of Florida for his native Spain. De Soto was Castilian from the central northern part of Spain and was one of many people from that region who sought their fortune in the New World. He made multiple journeys, landing in modern-day Peru, Panama, Florida, Georgia, North and South Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, and finally Northeast Louisiana, which finally killed him. Revisionist history tends to paint a broadly negative picture of all the conquistadors. They're considered brutes and arrogant expansionists who had little regard for any of the indigenous people they encountered. But De Soto was a polymath who was an accomplished soldier, land explorer, city builder, cartographer, and who learned and spoke several European languages and at least six Native American languages. He had a good relationship with some of the American Indian tribes and a bad relationship with others. That isn't to say he wasn't a product of his time. He believed the Native Americans were savages and treated them as such. He bought slaves from those tribes who enslaved their enemies, and he happily played into rumors that he was a deity sent by the sun to rule the world. When he died, his number two man didn't want to unsettle the tribes who believed that rumor, and so they weighed his body down and sunk him in the Mississippi River, probably somewhere on the Louisiana side near Vicksburg, Mississippi. And finally, today is the birthday in 1808 of another historical figure who is all too often maligned without any reference to his actual story. Jefferson Davis was born in Fairview, Kentucky, to second-generation Welsh immigrants. He became a senator for the state of Mississippi for the Democratic Party and was a supporter of the Compromise of 1850. When the U.S. Supreme Court threw that law out and the northern states were outraged, Davis found himself like many southern public servants. He was strongly opposed to secession, but firmly believed that every state had that right. On February the 9th, 1861, After the secession of Mississippi, he was elected president of the Confederate States of America in a landslide. Davis has been maligned through modern history as a vicious and uncaring racist, but the real story is much, much more nuanced, and to be honest, far more interesting. Look him up today if you have a chance. You won't regret it. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.